hello everyone in html part 1 we have studied some basic concepts related to html what is html what is boilerplate code now in level 2 we are gonna level up we are gonna study new concepts and some more important concepts so let us begin with our first concept which is inline and block elements so in html we have different elements we have different tags right and this tags can be categorized into two types each tag whatever the tag might be we can divide that tag into two types first one is inline element and the second one is block element and let us study in detail what are inline elements what are block elements and i will show you how or what is the behavior of our inline element or a block element in general so block elements are the elements which will take full width it will take the whole block in your html page whenever you know we have seen how to inspect uh, different websites and when you observe clearly you can see that some elements will take the full width of that uh, you can say rectangle it will take the full rectangle in that page irrespective of the content size even though the content size is very small but it will take the entire space and the next element will come in the new line okay and this nature the elements which are having this nature are known as block elements and whenever you are creating a new element in block after block element then it will come in a new line whereas inline elements are the elements which will take necessary space let's say that your content is taking only half of your screen then inline elements will take only half of the screen it will not occupy the entire block okay and they generally don't start from a new line until if the old content is taking up full space then it will take it will start from a new line but if the content is not taking the entire line entire width in the page then it generally won't start in a new line and you can see that i have shown you in diagram format let's say you are creating a block element right and you can see that in the block element you are writing this content let us assume that the diagram which I'm showing you is a content so you can see that it is only taking some little space but if this element is a block element then it will take entire line and the new element will come in the next line after the new again the new element will come on the next line like this block elements will occupy the entire width irrespective of the content size whereas line inline elements will only take the necessary space and the next element will come after that and the next element will come after it like this inline elements work and block elements work now let us see we have studied different tags and let us observe which one is a block element and which one is an inline element so here uh, you can see that we have studied heading tag we have studied paragraph tag anchor tag image tag now what i'm gonna do is that i will open my vs code and i will check which one is a block element which one is an inline element i know that if i am creating a block element then it will take entire line and the next element will come on the new line right whereas inline element will take only necessary space and the next element will come after that in within the same line if the content is small so what i'm gonna do is that i will check for heading tag paragraph tag anchor tag image tag so let me go to my vs code this is my vs code here and uh, this is my general document and this is my uh, like development basic folder which i have created now what i did is that i have added two more images batman 2 which i downloaded from the internet and i have added my image because in the next session we are in within few minutes we are going to create a portfolio site okay so for now you need to understand that i have created my general html page and imported or downloaded three images in this folder now what i'm gonna do is that in the boilerplate code within the body first of all i will write my heading tag let let me write heading tag h1 okay okay here what i'm gonna write is that checking nature of h1 tag okay now after this i'm gonna write another paragraph tag let's say i'm writing paragraph tag now in this i am going to write uh, this is a para right so let me save and run this so here so this is the web page right so i'm creating my web page and you can see that here first of all this h1 tag is only taking small 
space the content area of this is small even though the content area is small but it is taking the entire width entire line and the paragraph tag is coming after h1 tag okay so let me inspect it and let us see what is happening here so this is the body i'm opening body and you can see that here oh uh, okay i think this h1 tag why this is coming in h1 tag so let me save and yeah so i need to give here backslash h okay backslash h okay now this is the paragraph tag and my heading tag now let me save my page so you can see that this is the heading tag and this is the paragraph tag now if you observe if you click the inspect button you can see that this h1 tag is taking the entire block entire width because this is a block element and the paragraph tag also taking the entire width uh, right in the screen even though the content is small but it is taking the entire width this is the nature of a block element so if i uh, show you clearly so let me go to this and here what i'm gonna do is that i will give uh, in the css so what i'm gonna do is that first of all i will inspect this element and you can see that h1 is having this right so what i'm gonna do is that for this element i will give background color to show you how width is the entire width is occupying i will show i will give background color and i will give here red okay so you can see that h1 tag even though the content is small but this is a block element and that is why it will take the entire line and if i give color to this element also this paragraph tag also so here element style and i will give background color so we will study this everything in css when we study like coloring uh, like how to color element how to give font size font style all those kind of things we will study in css but for now to demonstrate how a block element is working i'm gonna uh, give background color so here background color as blue right so let me give blue and you can see that this red element is uh, this h1 tag is occupying the entire line even though the content is small this is the nature of a block element now in the vs code what i'm gonna do is that i will add an anchor tag so here i will add a and backslash a and i will give google website so here href is equals to www.google.com and here i will give the name as google one and after this we know that anchor tag is a inline element so here i'm gonna give another href is equals to www.google.com and here i will give google to backslash a now you can see that if anchor tag is a inline element then it should come in the same line because google will take only little space the content of google is very small right so after this if this is an inline element then it will come in the same line if it is if anchor tag is a block element then google 2 will come in the next line so let me save and run this so this is the page i'm having right so i will refresh this thing and you can see that heading tag is taking the entire block paragraph tag is taking the entire block but whereas anchor tag is only taking necessary space what is the content area it will it is taking only that space right and if you inspect now you can see that clearly that this is the anchor tag a and it is taking only necessary space because anchor tag is a inline element and if i give color to this so here i will give background color let me give red and i will give for this also the second anchor tag background background color uh, let me give green so you can see that these two elements these two elements are only taking necessary space because these two are uh, inline elements now let us check what is image whether image is a block element or an inline element so for this what i'm gonna do is that i will create an image tag here in my program image src is equal to let me give uh, my image batman one and i will give another image src is equals to batman two so let me save and go to the web page and refresh this thing so you can see that here this is image one this is a very large image that is why i am zooming it out okay 
so this is image one and after that immediately the next image is coming up and because image is an inline element that is why the two images are coming in the same line okay i hope you have understood so from this we have extracted that heading tag is a block element and paragraph tag is also a block element but anchor and image tags are inline elements and this anchor and image tag will only take the necessary space and the new element will come immediately after that whereas heading tag and paragraph tag even though the content is very small even though the content area of these two tags are very small but it will take the entire width i hope you have understood what is a block element what is the inline element and what are the nature of these two elements okay so let us talk about another very interesting and if you are a beginner then it might be a little bit confusing why we are introducing this two elements that is div and span but when we study css it will become very clear right we will understand why we are using the concept of div and span so div and span are they are two elements called as div and span and we use these elements to store other html elements in it you can consider them as a container you know in container what we store we store different elements right let's say at, uh, in kitchen we have different containers in one container we will store sugar in one container we will store salt like this we will store different things in different containers similarly we have in html we have two types of containers where we store different things and these two containers are div and span right and these two elements even though they don't have any you know meaning in, in itself for example if you are writing h1 tag it is given that in that what are the things you are writing you will write a heading tag right and if you are creating a paragraph tag then it is given that in that tag you will write paragraph but if you are writing div then it don't have meaning in itself you are not going to write anything in that but what is the work of this thing is that it will store other elements it will group a bunch of elements in it and you can consider this div tag as a container where you are gonna store h1 tag paragraph tag and span tag sorry anchor tag all these different things together right so div is a container that is used to hold other html elements or you can consider group elements together it is used to group html elements together and div is a block element so what i'm gonna do is that in the program i will remove all this thing and i will give two anchor tags so let me give href is equals to www.google.com and in this backslash a google google one now i will copy this same thing here I will copy the same thing and I will paste it three times. So we know that anchor tag is a anchor tag is an inline element. So if I save and run this program, so let me refresh this. So you can see that these three elements are coming in the same line because anchor tag is an inline element. Now what I'm gonna do is that I will put two tags, two anchor tags in one div element and the third anchor tag in another div. And let us see what will happen. So here what i'm gonna do is that i will take these two elements and i will put it in a div so i will create a div element and what is the work of a div it will store other elements whatever the element might be whether it is an inline element block element irrespective of that the work of div is to store other html elements in it so here i will copy these two anchor tags and i will paste it here and i will remove these two now let us see what will happen so let me save and go to my program so in the program I'm creating a div and in that div I'm storing two anchor tags and after that after div I'm creating another anchor tag now generally we have seen that if we are creating three anchor tags then it will come in the same line okay now let us see if I'm adding two anchor tags in one div and the third anchor tag is I'm creating it after a div so here let me go to my program and refresh this thing so you can see that google 1 and google 2 are coming in the same line but google 3 is coming in the third line why because this google 1 these two anchor tags are a part of a div and we know that div is a block element it will take the entire 
block entire width of your page and let me inspect this thing and i will demonstrate you what is happening here so this is the body i'm having right so you can see that this div in the div i'm having two anchor tags anchor tag one anchor tag two and after div this is anchor tag three and because these two tags are coming in a div that is why these two tags will consider as a block and the third tag will come after that after div tag okay so here let me give the block element also color so background color and let me give red okay so here you can see that these two tags are inline elements a1 and a2 but these two tags are coming under div element and div is a block element that is why it is taking the entire width and after div i'm creating another anchor tag and it is coming in the next line i hope you have understood how div works now there is another element which is very similar to div but it is an inline element the work of that element is also to store other html elements but it is a inline container so let me show you there is another element called a span and the work of span is also a a generic container it is also a generic container which is used to hold other html elements or group a bunch of html elements but the only difference between a span and a div is that span is a inline element okay span is a inline element this is the only difference now we have studied br tag right br tag is used to give a line a next line or to give a line gap between two elements we use br tag similarly if i want to write a line if i want to draw a horizontal line in my page then i will use hr tag okay and hr tag is also uh, it won't have any open it won't have any closing tag it will have just opening tag just like br tag if you notice br br will not have any closing tag similarly hr tag will also not have any closing tag okay so let us see how uh, hr tags work so for this i'm gonna create a portfolio site so here what i'm gonna do is that i will use the concepts of div which i have studied and i will try to make a portfolio site out of it okay so here what i'm gonna do is that i will write div and in the first div i will store my name uh college and my bachelor's degree okay so here i will store first of all i will create a heading h1 so here out of div i will create h1 backslash h1 and here i will give this is my portfolio port folio and in the div i'm gonna create a paragraph tag and in this para i will give backslash p first of all i will give name and in the bold format here let me give this in a bold format so here bold okay now name jabir hussain and after this i will copy the same thing and i will give college name here college name or bachelor's degree bachelor's computer science and engineering csc so csc and let me give the thing here uh, i will give city hyderabad okay i am giving my name bachelor's degree and city in one div and after it i am going to create the i will copy the same thing and i will store in the second div i will store my profession like what are my skills what are the things i know all those kind of things so here i will give skills here i will give full stack full stack and in this uh, let me give technologies or front end front end html css javascript html css javascript and backend uh, node.js express for now okay and after this uh, 
I will copy this same thing and let me give database also here. So yeah, uh, database. What I'm doing is that uh, using the concept of div, which is a block element and the work of div is to store other HTML elements in it. Now we have studied what is div block elements and using HR tag, all this kind of things. I'm gonna create a sample, you know, a, a teeny tiny portfolio site. Okay. So here uh, database and here MySQL, MySQL and my MongoDB, MongoDB. Okay. And after this, in the div one here, let me give another div here. In the div one, I will store my image, right? Because in portfolio, I will give image, right? We have image. So here, uh, backslash Jabir PNG and here. Okay. Now in the div one, I am storing image. In the div two, I'm still I'm giving my professions like what is my name, my background, city, all those kind of things. And in the div three, I'm giving my skills. What are the skills I'm having? All those kind of things. Now let me go and save this page. I will refresh this, and you can see that this is my portfolio site, image, and uh, name: Jabir Hussain, bachelor's degree, CSC, city, Hyderabad, and skills full stack like this. Now, what I want is that I want a HR tag. I want a line, horizontal line, after each and every section. Whenever a div is getting completed, I want to give a next line. So, in the program, what I'm gonna do is that here you can see that a div is getting completed. Now, after the div is getting completed, I will give HR tag, and this will create a horizontal line, a horizontal ruler, right? And after this, I will give another HR tag, HR. And after image also, I will give a HR tag, okay? And I want to decrease the size. So to manipulate the size, to make it into a round format or to add color, uh, we use uh, CSS. But for now, we don't know anything about CSS. So what I'm gonna do is that in the tag, in the tag in itself, I will give style here, okay? So style is equals to max width. Let me give max width as 20% and height auto now this might sound what is max width and all those kind of things some uh, you know alien language to you but for now these things are used to manipulate the size of image and when we study css it will become clear so no need to worry at all okay so here let me go to my page again and i will refresh this thing so here you can see that my image got decreased and this is my portfolio image uh, my name is Tavrosen like this I'm giving and you can see that I got horizontal line after each and every div block Okay, and I can also decrease I want to decrease this image by 10% So let me save and go to my page again and refresh this thing and you can see that this is now looking good portfolio like this We have created our portfolio site now in the first session if you remember uh, i have told you that html is used to give formatting and uh, we can create bullet points we can like uh, create superscript subscript using html and if you recall some concepts of science uh, in chemistry we used to like give the formula of water which is h2o and if you notice 2 2 is very small when compared to the characters in it right and this we call this as subscript and we can create this by using a tag called as subscript and if you recall the concept of math uh, we used to give power of element pythagoras theorem and in that you can see that after a 2 is coming on top of a and we call this as superscript right and we can create superscript using a tag called as sup we can create superscript and we can create subscript using a tag called as subscript okay i hope you have understood how we can create subscript and superscript in html now let us do a sample question and in the question we need to print the following thing pythagoras theorem and this in our screen using h1 tag and we gonna use our superscript and subscript concept here so what i'm gonna do is that first of all i will create a html tag uh, h1 tag and in this i'm gonna write all these things right and after a i will give super to backslash super like this i will create here also i will give in the h1 tag i will write all the things here and whenever i'm creating is c sub 
C6H2LO6. Like this, I will create my subscript and superscript in my HTML document. So let us create this thing. So yeah, let me go here. Now I'm gonna remove, for now I'm gonna remove my beautiful portfolio site, okay? So my question is that using HTML tag, H1 tag, uh, I need to write uh, Pythagoras, Pythagoras theorem. I might write some spelling mistake here. So A and two will come on top of A, right? So here I need to give superscript two A square plus here I need to give backslash P plus B square B and superscript b square is equals to c square superscript and 2 backslash p so let me save this thing here uh, yeah okay so let me save this thing and go to my page and i will refresh this you can see that pythagoras theorem a square plus b square is equals to c square similarly i can use superscript uh, subscript also here so here I will write h1 backslash h1 uh, glucose formula glucose formula is and I will give uh, c6 so c subscript backslash subscript h2 well h O6 okay so subscript O6 this is the formula of glucose so let me go to my output save this and go to my output so here I will refresh this thing and you can see that Pythagoras theorem and you can see that 2 this 2 is coming on top of A and this is known as superscript and here this 6 is coming this 6 is coming under C and the size is small so this is how we will use subscript and superscript concepts in our HTML so there is an important concept called as semantic markup and the meaning of semantic markup it is, is that it is a markup that relates to the meaning of the content right for example when I am saying that I am using h1 tag what I'm indirectly implementing, what I'm indirectly telling is that I'm going to write heading. Okay. And whenever I'm saying that I'm going to use a paragraph tag, a P tag, then I'm indirectly telling you guys that I'm going to write para in it. So HTML tags can be divided into two types, semantic markup and non-semantic markup right semantic markup and non semantic markup you can consider that semantic tags semantic markup tags are the tags which will give the meaning in itself for example if i am writing h1 tag then i am going to write heading if i am using paragraph tag then it is given that in that i am going to write para if i am using image tag then it is given that in that the only thing which is coming in this is image if i am using anchor tag so all this tags h1 paragraph tag image tag anchor tag is semantic tag what the meaning of semantic is that it will the tag will give the meaning of the content the tag will give oh in this heading is coming in this uh, link is coming so this tags will give semantic tags will give the meaning of the content whereas non-semantic tags are the tags which don't have meaning in itself for example div so when i'm writing div what you understand from it generally if you don't know anything about html then you won't get anything from it right and span is also a non-semantic tag right so these are the different tags which we are having and you might ask why we use why we are like uh, using some semantic tags why we are like introducing new concepts so for that let me show you a website i will show you a website a sample government website such that we can understand it better so i will go to a cbse website so cbsc cbsc website and this is the cbsc website right 
so let me open it i hope it will get opened okay this is the general i think student website central board of secondary education and what i'm gonna do is that i will show you the inspect button of this so when i click on inspect you can see that there is a tag called as center okay and if i go deep into this tag you can see that this is divided into different uh, div blocks and it will have <coughs> this div different div blocks is having different tags in itself right so and there is another tag called as marquee and yeah uh, in the marquee tag in the in this tag you can see that it is storing ol which is ordered list and if i go deep into this you can see that this is a paragraph tag so semantic tags this center is a semantic tag and this will show that the content will come on the center of the web page okay and similarly div blocks will store and uh, like it is a container which is used to store other html elements in it now we have understood that this website this website is divided into different sections so this is a section in itself this is a section this image tag and this whole thing is a table table is a section and this is a div block so a page uh, this page this cbse page is divided this is a td tag like this and this all is a html tag so you can see clearly that this document is this html web page is divided into different sections and each and every section will give the meaning of that like content and the meaning the tag which give the meaning of the content is known as semantic tags now you might ask what is the use of semantic tag why we are uh, you can see that here we are creating a tag called as center head header section like this we have different semantic markup tags so let us talk about why we use this tag so one of the first reasons why we use a semantic markup like header uh, like section like uh, uh, footer you can see that whenever you go on the last level of a website and if you observe if you inspect that website you can consider that there is a footer and the reason why we use footer is that it will give you the meaning that you have reached the end of the website okay and if you go on any section we use a section tag and it will tell you that this section tags hold this bunch of elements in it and this is a section and you might seen that in cbse website when we inspected that thing there is a center and center will tell you that all the content should come in the center of the web page so first the reason why we use semantic tag is first thing is it will give a structure it will give a full meaning or you can say structure to the web page right semantic tags header footer section center these things will give the meaning and the structure of the web page and the second reason is that uh, it will make our website seo friendly it will make our website seo friendly what i mean seo friendly is that uh, this semantic tags will let's say i'm searching a website uh, google.com and when you search google.com you can see that on top the first result will be google.com and some websites it might be government websites or any third party websites if you search for third party website you can see that the third party websites will come on the third or the fourth of the result why this things is happening is that in that they are not using semantic tags that much and when you use semantic tags your website will become much more higher and you will become a seo friendly website and the third reason is that whenever you are using readers inbuilt browser readers right there is a person who can't see and he can only listen so what he will do is that he will just make the device to read out what is there in the website and when we create a structured format by using semantic tags then it will become very much easier for a browser to read what is there in the website so these are the three main reasons why we use semantic tags okay now the example of semantic tag is header tag and this header if you observe some websites the initial part of a website can be divided by using header tag and this header tag will show that this part is the initial part of our website 
and after it you can see there is a main content and the main part of the website can be described using main tag okay after it footer footer will tell you that uh, you are you have reached the end of the website and if you observe let me show you also here for example let me show you a website okay so this is mdn docs and you in this you can study everything so if you click on inspector if you click on inspect and observe the website just observe you can see that this is a div and in that div you are having different buttons different things okay and you can see that this is the footer of the website and footer will tell you that you have reached the end of the website so here you can see that footer this is the footer in itself so this whole thing is a footer right you can see that this is a footer and in footer what we generally do is that we will give some other links you can see that here we are giving different links of mdn about blog career all this kind of things and after that you can see that there is a tag called as main tag and this main will show you that the this is a main content of our website and at the very initial level uh, whenever you're storing links whenever you want to give the main part or you can say the initial idea of your website then you will write it in the header part okay so here i will come back to my ppt so on top on top initial part of the website we use header and it will give you an idea of what the website is about and main tag the semantic main tag is used to store the main content it will store the main content in my html page and footer is used to give some extra links some uh, extra links here and some copyright things we used to write it in the footer and it is the last part of our website and nav tag is used to store collection of links to store collection of links we use nav tag and if you go i want you guys to go to mdn website and study a document and if you uh, see the structure on left side you can see that all the tags the collection of tags are uh, you know comes one another and if you click on inspect and observe what is this section you will observe that it is a nav section and in nav section we give collection of links together portfolio site what we have created uh, this question says that we need to create semantic tags for this so what i'm gonna do is that whatever the portfolio site i have created i will try to give meaning to that site so this is the web page this is a portfolio site i have created now what i will do is that this is the initial part of my web page we will give the which will give the meaning of my web page that this web page is about portfolio so for this i will give i will write it this in header so i will write this thing in header backslash header and after this you can consider that this div image and the second div third div is the main part of my website so here i will give main tag main and after this here also backslash main now after this i will give footer i will give footer and i will write in the footer i will write some para uh, para backslash a and this is a very basic very basic html portfolio site portfolio site uh, for jabir hussain of jabir hussain okay so site of jabir hussain now you can see that i have divided using semantic tags i have divided my web page into two three different parts first part is header part and header part will give the meaning of the site the second part is a main part and the main part in the main part i will store the main content of my portfolio site and in the third part which is a footer footer will give okay these are the links that jabir hussain has having and this is about jabir hussain what is this about okay so let me go to my portfolio and if i refresh my portfolio site my portfolio site will remain the same but internally i have given meaning internally i have given a clear structure and if you click on inspect and see what is happening here you can see that your web page is divided into three parts header main tag and footer 
like this we can uh, create and this part this site will become somewhere SEO friendly there is a concept called as HTML entities right and to understand HTML entities you need to understand that uh, if you observe some sites if you observe some sites you might have seen hot hot symbol in the website and you might seen that and greater than power and some symbols alpha delta and uh, mm, some arrow symbols some arrow up down arrow and hot arrow like hot arrow something like this and this symbols this symbols which we are not having in our keyboard but people are writing it and how they are writing it they are writing it using a concept called as html entities and using html entities we can write different symbols we can write different you know uh, alphabets which are not there in our website which are not there in our keyboard okay so an html entity is a piece of text that begins with and percent and percent and ends with colon so whenever you want to create let's say i want to create heart in my web page okay so to create a heart we can only create a heart using html entity and each and every html entity will begin with a and percent and it will end with semicolon okay and it is used to reverse characters and invisible characters okay and can also be used to represent some standard keyboard and browser interprets and render these characters so whenever you are creating a html entity the browser will understand oh this is a hot this is arrow this is the thing like this so let me show you what i'm telling so let's say that here uh, i wanna add in the html document this is html css javascript right in my portfolio site and i want to add and symbol so generally a normal people who don't know about html entity they will write and here but this is not a good way so to write and to write greater than some symbols we use a concept called as html entities so to create a html entity let's say i want to create and so to create and i will use html entity and i know that html entity will begin with and and it will end with semicolon so i will write and a n p comma so this thing this thing will create and percent in my html document so what i'm gonna do is that i will save this document and i will go to my portfolio site and refresh this thing and you can see that i got and here but in the program i didn't write and i have used html entity this is a html entity which is used to represent and now if i wanna write uh a hot symbol so if i want to write a hot symbol what i will do is that i will go to my uh, so here i will write html entities and you can see that i got the website of uh, w3 schools and in this you can see that uh, to write greater than i will uh, use and lt and semicolon so if i want to use symbols if i want to write symbols or emojis something like this then i can use here um, this thing so if i wanna use for all then i can use this entity for all and for entity so this is the number you don't need to worry about numbers you can remember entities as a part right entities for characters right so here if i wanna write a uh, name for all jabir hussein so here this will create a for all symbol in my web page so this is the web page i'm having right so let me remove all this so this is the web page i'm having now i will refresh this and you can see that i got the symbol as for all now if i want to add after hyderabad if i want to add a heart symbol so here i will give go to characters emojis and you can see that these are the different things i'm having right so if i want to add uh, after hyderabad here let me go to symbols okay now if i want to add this heart then i can give use this and here i will write after hyderabad i will write this entity and go to my website and refresh this and you can see that after hyderabad i got heart so this are html entities which are used to 
write different symbols different emojis in our platform in our html document i hope you have understood what is a html entity now this is the question so in this question i want you guys to write this so what how you're gonna do is that first of all write this thing so the sky is cloudy and in this thing in h1 tag and for after it you can see that you are getting cloud so search for cloud html entity html entity and you will get the text right so copy that and paste this in your html document after it continue with your h1 and after it you will get this umbrella so for umbrella search umbrella html entity and you will get some code or some text right and person some text comma right <coughs> copy this and paste it in your html document and write today like this you can create this and i want you guys to do this on your own okay so let us move to the next concept and the name of the concept is emit so we have studied like let me show you uh, emit what is emit so here this is the document I have created, right? So I will remove all this thing. So I will remove all this. And when I give exclamation mark, you can see that it is showing emit abbreviation. So emit are the packet of codes which are, or you can say shortcuts, which are used to write a packet of code at once. So when I click enter, immediately I will get boilerplate code. So here I will, I wanna show you emit website also. So I will go to uh, emit.io, so here. So here, this is the website of emit.io. And if you read the documents here, so here, let me give, this is the web page of emit.io. Now, uh, here, documentation, go to documentation. And from this, you can see that on the left side, you will see abbreviations, syntax, right? So if I wanna give a child element, if I wanna write div as a parent element and in that ul, is a child element so what i can do is that let's say that i want to create a parent and child element so what i will do is that first of all i will write div and in this i want to write a, a paragraph as a child element so i will write p and you can see that immediately i will get div as a parent element and in that child element is paragraph tag so this is one of the abbreviations this is one of the emitter so here i will go back to my page and similarly to add elements to write siblings for example in this in this tag i want to write div plus paragraph plus a ol so here you can see that i will immediately get div tag paragraph tag and ol in the same parent element in the same parent element and this are siblings to another you know we have in html tags we have a concept called as parent and child relation parent and child relations siblings so for example let's say that i'm writing a uh, html tags like this div in the div i'm writing paragraph tag this is my paragraph tag and after that i'm writing div so here you can see that in this div tag inside the div tag i'm getting paragraph tag so here the parent element will become my div and in that i will get i'm getting paragraph tag for example i'm writing div and in the div, I'm writing two tags, paragraph tag, anchor tag, and again, div. So here you can see that I'm having one parent and one parent is having two children, which is paragraph tag and anchor tag, right? And this paragraph tag and anchor tag are in same level. That is why these two tags are said to be siblings to one another. I hope I have understood what is a parent hierarchy and what is a child hierarchy and how two elements can be sibling to one another. If two elements are in same level, then they are said to be siblings to one another. If two elements are creating a hierarchy, let's say I'm getting div first, after it I'm getting para, then div will become a parent element and para will become a child element like this i can have different elements also like for example i'm creating main function right so in the main function i'm creating a div inside that div i'm creating a para and inside that i'm getting an anchor tag like this we can create a long form of parent child relations also right so i will show you the code also like i'm creating main tag and in the main tag i'm creating div and in the div i'm creating para and in that para i'm creating anchor tag right after it again para tag div tag and main tag right so this is the structured format of this diagram i hope you have understood what is parent child relation 
and siblings similarly like the fifth output multiplication if you wanna multiply a least element let's say you're creating a list of elements an ordered list and you wanna create five elements in it then you can use this multiplication abbreviation right so here you can see that uh, there is a cheat sheet so click on cheat sheet and i want you guys to at least remember some of this like uh, syntax some abbreviations of html like this at least 10 of this elements i want you to at least remember this because in future we are gonna use this abbreviations emit document a lot of a lot more times okay so just take a look at this and let us go back to our concepts up to now we have studied like different concepts in html so let us enhance some more understanding of html so html the term html5 is essentially a buzzword that refers to a set of modern technologies this includes html living standard along with javascript so uh, html5 is not just html it includes some javascript apis to enhance storage multimedia and hardware access right and you need to understand that html5 is a collection is a collection of modern technologies right it is a, tech, a, 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 a you know, collection of modern technologies like javascript apis html like this you know inbuilt in html5 we have these things and previously when we were writing html in 2015 when html5 was not there uh, we are, were just writing html and after it we used to attach some functionalities something like this right uh, using javascript but in html5 uh, we will get some included applications javascript apis right and html5 is not just one technologies it is a collection of modern technologies okay and you know HTML, there is a standard called as html standard which will tell you that this heading tag will look like this image tag will look like this anchor tag when you see that whenever we are creating anchor tag under that we are getting underlined how we are getting underlined using this the concept of html standard html standard will tell that image will look like this anchor tag should look like this that like this it will tell and it is a beginner guide to html5 okay i hope you have understood some overall concepts of html5 and in the html level 3 we are gonna level up and in level 3 we will focus on two things which are really important the first one is table and the second one is form so with that being said i will see you in the next one